changing the um, uh, migration of all my stuff over to a new version of Home Assistant and made some improvements to some new software updates, which uh, I've taken advantage of. And um, for those of you know, I, I keep threatening doing a, a you know a smart home and how to save money on electricity talk to the club. And uh, I did actually come across yesterday um, an amazing lady on uh, on on YouTube who. Um, has um, taken a whole new uh, slant to uh, electronics with art. The, 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 the woman is very accomplished, you know, in electronics and what have you, and um, she's also um, uh, an artist, uh, and um, the way she combines these two things is, is incredible. You know, I, I, I posted up on the um, groups.io um, her a clickbaity video actually when you see the start of it but re really worth watching because it, it, um, it's a very good overview of smart home technology so she just mentioned KNX so that's not a matter I'll put that in the comments and um, also um, her project Daffid the Dragon um, she's Welsh of course and, um, which I just I thought to myself this is fantastic but on the strength of her videos I've just ordered they're coming today 50 NFC, car, uh, NFC stickers uh, to do some cool stuff around the house, and um, it's amazing what you can do with a modern phone and uh, NFC, and um, Home Assistant supports all this as well, so um, I'm going to use it for switching uh, light scenes on and off in rooms, so when you go into a room, hold your phone up to the sticker, and um, that the, the, um, uh, the, the, the scene will, uh, you know, there'll be a light scene, and um, so there's a, quite a few things I can do with that, so I've got my creative juices and I, I loved also the way she had uh, these things in um, pictures and uh, she got the picture and hold her phone uh, you know, a smart on the wall and then she made things happen in, in, in the house and uh, she used uh, lighting around the pictures to depict different um, uh, scenarios as well but Daffy the Dragon, it, it, it's cut a long story short she, she's um, using it and the, the code lights underneath to indicate her um, performance of her solar panels and and, her, and the charge level of her battery, but you can use this for lots and lots of things, and it's very simple to implement with an ESP32 and the ESP Home, etc. So yeah, am absolutely amazing. I think her, her creativity. Then she's got another set of videos about building a PC um, and and uh, what, what she's chosen and why. And she's um, also accomplished um, the artist. Uh, a clever CNC machine comes to woodwork and she's made a wooden well she's making a wooden cabinet for this PC as well and uh, there's a whole thing how she uh, um, uh, did the air filters as well so really worth watching I, you know worth subscribing to her channel and watching all her videos there aren't that many so far but really impressed with her um, Katie Hands on Katie it's called she's got a website with more details as well which you can give up Hands on Katie but she's a real uh, typical of the modern maker fraternity and frankly the people we should be encouraging into amateur radio because that's what a lot of amateur radio is about is making. Right, anyway, uh, that's enough for me for the minute. Um, it must be around the David M0WDV. Thank you, this is G8YTZ. Oh, and could you put the M7, could you give me your name as well? Because you're not all on um, your Z, so if you give me your names, I can uh, update my details in the box. Around to David G8YTZ. Right, right. Yeah, brake station acknowledged. Did you get that, Dave? Oh, yeah, Roger. Go on the brake station. Yeah, Golf 4, Fox or Alpha Alpha, unexpectedly. Uh, good morning, everyone. So far, uh, YTZ, 5 and 9. Um, well, that's about it. Uh, uh, back to you. Uh, wherever you are. Hello. <laughs> Uh, quickly go over to uh, M0 WDV, Golf 6, and then from your hotel, over to you, Dan. Okay, uh, thanks uh, Dave, and uh, good morning Laurie. Uh, good morning also to uh, Dave, M7IPY, and to Tony, M7FSC, and uh, welcome to uh, Amateur Radio with your new call signs, which I understood you, you got yesterday. Um, and very good morning to you, of course, Dave, and uh, to you, Mark and Justin. Um, 
Justin, uh, yes, uh, Dive with the Dragon, that's, that's me. <laughs> but uh, I, I will definitely look at those videos, that sounds interesting. Um, but I presume it's, it's like the, the, you posted a couple to the reflector last night, I haven't looked at them there, but that's, uh, I presume that's, that's what you were referring to there. Um, uh, and also, Justin, I've got a couple of uh, uh, bags of transistors for you from Mark M0JCF, which uh, I was meant to pass to you at the meeting on Thursday, but uh, you weren't there. Um, I'm happy to just pop them in an envelope, stick a second-class stamp on them, um, if, if you're okay with that, uh, Justin. Um, signal reports. Uh, uh, Dave, G6RH, your uh, S9 plus 20, and uh, Mark, uh, yeah, the bill goes back to you as well, your S9 plus uh, more than 40, <laughs> and uh, Justin, um, S9 plus uh, 10. Uh, Dave, Tony, and Laurie, um, I, I wasn't looking at the uh, meter when you called in, so I don't have reports for you uh, just yet. Um, and, uh, and Dave NRH, I think there was another uh, station calling in just at the same time as me, because when I uh, keyed up, I heard the end of somebody's call, and it didn't sound like it was Dave or Tony, so I think there might be somebody else out there trying to get into the net as well. I could be wrong, but it uh, might be worth a, worth a call out. Um, I'll, um, I'll talk a bit more about... Um, uh, what I've been up to uh, on the next over and uh, hopefully give some more reports um, but uh, for now I'll just say uh, congratulations to the to the two new M7s uh, on the net Dave and uh, Tony and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get some more and my son is not, he got his party yesterday as well but uh, he's, uh, he's, his priority is, uh, is, is church this morning all right, round to uh, Dave, M7 IPY, uh, from M0 WDV. Break, break. Uh, M0 WDV, uh, this is my 7 IPY. Uh, very nervous, first time actually speaking on two meters and first time on the net. Um, I've had to drive um, up to South East London. I'm just up the road from Falconwood Station at the moment, sitting in my car with a madman on the roof. Uh, and I'm transmitting on the, uh, the Quang Sheng, that little handheld, which is my entry into the world of ham radio. So um, hopefully you can all hear me okay. I'm, uh, I'm pushing out a gigantic four watts, I believe. I've even checked the swire on the antenna this morning, and it, it's one to one, and it seems flat right across two metres. <coughs> uh, I'm going to keep this over short because I'm new to this. Uh, hopefully I'll get another round in a minute. So I'm going to pass it. To the next person who I believe is Tony. Uh, so M7 Foxtrot Sierra Charlie, this is Mike 7 India Papa Yankee. I've got that all right. Mike 7 Foxtrot Sierra Charlie, thanks for that. Hello to you, Dave. You're sick. We're at our horse, mate. I'm hearing, hearing. Good to hear you're making the start. I've made it nervous. So here we are. Mike 7 Foxtrot Sierra Charlie, go on, November, Romeo Hotel. But you've, you've, uh, you've dipped your toes in the 
and I'm running, um, what am I running? I'm running the Anytone 778 uh, UV, which is top, I think it's top output, it's about 25 points. I'm only running at about 13.29, so it's not doing too bad, it's making the trip. And everyone is all lovely signals, all 5 and 9, maybe slightly less, 5 and 7, but uh, still making the trip down to sunny Welling. And it is sunny actually, it makes a nice change. Hear everybody. Uh, I suppose what I could do, I suppose, is now give uh, Jakob a chance to have a go and see if he can have a quick word when he's down at the bottom of the list. Let's see how we go. Oh, could you pass that over to you, Jakob? M0KUK, Gold 6 November, Romeo Hotel, uh, M0KUK, with a slight order. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, all, all good. Good morning, David. 
G6 NRH M0 JCF. I think I should change my name to Dave. We've got one, including Dev, we've got one, two, three, we've got four Daves on the net today. So I'll, I'll go through the reports again. There has been some changes. Uh, you may hear in the background as well, uh, the people opposite have got stone cutters in. They're having some block paving put in. Uh, I am recording this um, this net as well, which I'll put on YouTube. So especially for the new guys so that they can um, see and hear uh, on my setup uh, what they sound like. So G6 NRH Dave. Um, your end stop, G8, YTZ, Justin, end stop, M0, WDV, Dad, end stop, um, Dave, the base, you're about 5 and 9 plus 20 to me, because uh, you're just up the road and up a slight hill from me, so uh, that explains why you was a lot better signal than I thought you would be with a Quensheng down in uh, where you live, uh, I think Dartford way. Um, uh, Tony, M7, FSC, uh, your signal is, is quite interesting that um, it started off when you called in. You was about a three and three, and uh, your signal's actually been up as far as five and seven, but with a lot of flutter. And uh, if you're in Erif, I'm just wondering if we're getting aircraft flutter from um, the aircraft at London City Airport interestingly it's not the usual fluttering um, it, you'll get used to it um, after a while you, you sort of start to recognize this whether it's aircraft or buses or huge lorries on the the a2 that sort of thing you get used to it but uh, you've definitely got some enhancement going on there so i'm not sure what's going on um g4 ffa lorry plus 30 to me but lorry i'm wondering if there's one of two things either you've got a dodgy connection on your antenna or you've got a dodgy push to talk because uh, your last over you was literally switching on and off as if you know like, um, uh, you were switching the rig off back on and what was happening is um, Dave NRH was doubling with you to uh, to sort of try and let you know that you wasn't uh, transmitting um, Alex M7 India Oscar India very well done old chap and uh, yeah it was good that uh, you went on HF yesterday I see you've got a lot of Polish stations um, there is actually uh, I don't know if it's the whole weekend but yesterday there was um, a Polish competition on yesterday and I listened around 10 meters and there were a lot of Sierra Papa stations so that was a good opportunity to uh, work some um, short skip into Europe and I see you've got Spain as well um, I'm not sure if uh, <coughs> what band you was on you may have been on 20 or 40 meters but um, yeah you you was um, you was uh, you, you were doing all right there and uh, you know little steps you before you know it you'll be uh, bouncing completely around the world and of course um, Jakob uh, exactly the same you're both coming in five and nine plus end stop and uh, Dave, uh, G4NOW Mobile, 5 and 9 plus 10, which is not too shabby for a handheld down in uh, Bexley when you consider there's a few hillocks in between us. Um, HF-wise, well, as I have been for the last two and a half years or so, concentrating mainly on 10 and 12 metres, I am a CQR, as uh, most people know. I'm not sure if I mentioned it last week, but two new countries for me in the past week and a bit. I've had uh, the Seychelles and uh, the Cayman Islands, uh, both, I think they were 10 or 12 metres, can't remember. Um, yeah, I... I'm, 
Uh, where are we? I'm just looking back from my paper notes. But uh, I think it was probably 10 metres. Um, I do a lot of CQing on 10 and 12. And uh, mainly it's been East Coast USA coming back to me. Uh, the solar flux index has been quite low this last week. It's been sort of above 110. and uh, But uh, it hasn't gone really above 120. And that's the lowest it's been in probably two years. So uh, the sunspot numbers are creeping up again i suppose uh, as the sun rotates and all of the active regions were on the uh, far side they're coming into view now so hopefully uh, the solar flux will go up but of course with that we get noise and we also get um uh, uh blackouts as well if there's any active flares which there most likely will be um so uh, yeah so that's uh, my hf uh, that i've been doing uh, mainly mainly usa stations but we've um i've been noticing a lot in the afternoon um and and they're already in sunset i've been getting a lot of um middle east turkey greece ukraine uh, it seems to be in that that sort of pocket and always about five o'clock in the afternoon which as i say they will probably already have reached their local sunset but they've been coming in but uh, the signals have been low they've all been sort of lower than five and five dipping towards sort of a, a four and two, that sort of thing. And uh, the only other thing that I've been doing this week, um, a young lorry came round, G4FIA, with his valve tester. Uh, we only tested a couple of valves out of the huge pile that I've got. Um, it is quite a laborious process when you've got lots of um, uh, different numbered valves. I don't seem to have lots and lots of them that are all the same flavour. I think Laurie's actually tested all of them for me in the past. But uh, that was quite an eye-opener. I haven't used a valve tester since my old Avo valve tester went bang way back in the 80s. So, um, yeah, it was, it was nice to uh, sort of play about with one. And uh, the other thing that we looked at was the 2KW, 2000Bs that I've got. Um, both of them, cosmetically very good, but um, uh, neither of them performing adequately. Uh, one we did um, manage to get 50 watts out of, and then on one setting, uh, the, the power suddenly went up uh, quite dramatically, and I was sure that I saw the magic smoke. And um, I sort of said to Laurie, we got smoke, we got smoke, but there was no smell, which was unusual. Now, if anyone's seen my workshop in my garage, you'll see that, that there could also be lots of bits of fluff and God knows what else floating around. I may have seen fluff out the corner of my eyes, but uh, there you go. So we, we had a play around with a couple of 2000 Bs, which Laurie has now taken away. And at some point he's going to have a look at and decide off the two if he would like to uh, take one off my hands. But uh, that's about it, really. So that, that's a full a gamut there of um, hardware fashion around um, operating and I think I've now given everyone reports so round to you Justin a GA oh that just uh, I think I've, I did I mention it I'm actually recording this for YouTube mainly so that the new guys can um, see that you know um, or hear their voices in lights but we are we are um, hammered by them across the road with their stone cutter so I don't know what the fidelity and quality is going to be like, but it is what it is. It's just a YouTube video, you know, there's no production value going into it whatsoever. G8, YTZ, M0, JCF in the Cray Valley, Sunday morning, two metre net. Yeah, G8, YTZ, uh, good morning again, everyone. And um, I'm just going through the signal reports. Um, well, um, Dave, you come in at um, <coughs> nine blueberries. Mark, your nine blueberries and two cherries. Daffod, your nine blueberries and three cherries. And uh, M7 IPY, seven blueberries. M7 FSC, nine blueberries. Uh, Laurie, you're um, definitely uh, agree with Mark. Uh, I reckon you've got a dodgy connection on your antenna because you were just going to be slightly down keyed and uh, then came back and you were fading as well, like QSB, but it wasn't really QSB, it was like a dodgy connection in your aerial. So you, you mentioned you think your aerial is very inefficient. I would uh, go further than that and say it's absolutely useless and uh, you'd be better off with a rubber duck. Um, you're a really variable weak signal um, for, compared to what you should be. So 
So, yeah, definitely got something wrong there. Just check your SWR as well. I would I'll have a look at that. Um, right, and um, Jakob, unreadable. Um, um, and uh, uh, NOW, Dave, unreadable. So, uh, uh, not, and there's another station there as well, is also unreadable, another M7, which was very un unreasonable. But impressed away uh, the, the signal at M7 FSC, Tony, I think it was, uh, it's coming in. Now, what you guys need to do is get yourself on QRZ.com, get yourself an account, put your uh, bio and details in there and your location, uh, because that's the lookup that everybody uses to, um, you know, identify stations. And when you go on a lot, logbooks and stuff, so you need to get that done as soon as possible. Uh, you might need somebody to refer you, I can't remember, but we can always do that. I'm sure someone on here will do that. And um, Home Assistant, yeah, uh, so I, I've used it for years, um, <coughs> and uh, I, I, I let it um, drop back a few revs because there were some breaking changes, and uh, I just didn't have the time when I was working uh, to do it, so I decided just to build a brand new uh, server and migrate all the services over and I mean I'll give you some examples you know uh, apart from the home the CCTV things like the deluxe windows and the energy management of the house it's all built into this weather etc locations of us you know where Julie is and maps and things APRS map okay that's another thing supported on, on, on there you know I've got APRS map I put, um, I kind of put people I, I know in there, um, and I can just click on them and see where they are, and I can see right now, um, Damien on there, for example, I can see um, uh, Tony, he's local today, okay, I can see, um, so yeah, there's quite a few people, um, and, that, and that's one of the things, and um, um, of course what you can do is, you, you can make zones and you can sort of send alerts and alerts on uh, your mobile phone app as well uh, for it. Anyway, it does that, um, and, and I use it for all my heating and lighting controls, media, uh, for example, the, the stream receiver, the uh, Apple TV. Um, I can tell uh, Madam A to turn a TV on and stuff like that. Um, I use it for security on the house, uh, combined with the um, uh, on-div cameras, um, and um, I can even see on here that Julie's having a shower and what, what colour she's got the lights on. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, you know, um, and uh, all the smart metering, phosphorus <coughs> energy, do the gas as well, water if you've got smart meter water. Um, and uh, battery level, the Tesla Powerwall, cars as well, they're integrated into it. Um, front door locking, uh, warning of uh, alerts if the front door's been left unlocked and stuff like that. And uh, not forgetting, I'm using the Modbus Pro to go, I've got the remote repeater control, so I can use the Home Assistant uh, app out mobile, I can shut the repeater down if necessary, but also I get running information. For example, I can see the return loss is 34 dB right now, and I can see the uh, PA heatsink temperature is 28.7 Celsius. So, um, and I get alerts if it goes off the air or, or, or certain functions uh, get, get, go wrong. I'm actually going to add another feature. Um, I use a, a Chinese Modbus RTU to do this. Uh, Mod Modbus is a uh, protocol that goes back to the 70s and is widely used in uh, SCADA uh, systems, both in you know, railway, <coughs> water companies, lots and lots of an industrial plant um, man management and process control. Um, so it's a uh, the, the nice thing about the, these Chinese RTUs. There's a company called USL IoT that make lots of really good modules. And uh, they, they make a, an all-in-one <coughs> uh, Modbus TCP R RTU. Sports RS 485 as well, because that's, that's part of the protocol or part of the standards. And I can, uh, with that, I can, um, you know, do a lot of stuff remotely and, and quite cost-effectively. Um, and and uh, you know, same stuff. I've got my Synology drive in there. You can monitor remote PCs and things. You know, put clients on there. 
<coughs> the, the number of integrations is beyond belief. It's everything, everything you can imagine. And it'd be really easy, I don't know if anyone's done it, someone probably has, it'd be easy to integrate your um, amateur radio equipment as well. Um, you know, the cat uh, stuff. But you could do that as well if you wanted to. So, um, no, there you have it. Um, I need to give a, this talk about energy saving. I'll, I'll focus on how I use it for uh, paying um, around about seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour for my grid electricity, uh, plus making best use of the solar and what have you. And, and that's what I pay 24-7 um, because of the batteries and the way Home Assistant manages the, um, the charging and other cars as well. So uh, that, it, it's really... Um, really beneficial, save you a lot of money and it's really easy to set up, it couldn't be more simpler. And I'll say, um, uh, a hands on Katie in that video does a really good introduction uh, with it and her website is good as well. It's a, it's a nice, uh, you know, not too technical and it's like all these things, they, they can be baffling when you first look at them, but as soon as you sort of start getting it and then using the forums, then, then you'll be well into it. Any, anyone on this call will be well into it. I bet it's a few years it already, anyway. Um, but yeah, there you go. That, that, that's it. Um, I'm probably going to call this my last now, because I want to get off. Um, oh, one last thing I'll just say. Um, today is a solar eclipse, and they've asked that as many people as possible to get on Whisper, because they're expecting some strange uh, propagation phenomena. Yesterday, all the polar stations were booming in on all the bands, and the bands were really quiet, except 80, or right, that funny, I think it's that Russian thing, I don't think it's a switch mode power supply that popped up, but that Russian thing, it goes in, in, a, in a sort of a, a, a band, it might be a power supply, so I saw two of them yesterday, but I've seen them come up and down, so I don't think it's a switch mode power supply, and on different bands, but it, 80, it was selecting a good bit, chunk, a little bit of 80 yesterday. Uh, but yeah, booming, everything was booming yesterday, and the, the bands were really quiet, you know, the noise levels were really quiet, so be interesting to see what happens with the eclipse tonight. But yeah, put your whispers on, even if it's only on receive. Uh, I think I'm, I'm running mine now, so uh, and it's been going great guns recently, I've got to say. Very, very good performance. Right, okay, oh, sorry, a bit long over. I'll make you my last. So, uh, round to Daffit, uh, uh, M0WD, VGA, YTZ. Okay, YTZ, M0WDV. Uh, Daffit, um, very interesting stuff there, uh, Justin. And uh, yeah, the talk for your um, saving money uh, sounds like a, a great idea um, for the club. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in that. And uh, yeah, sounds like. Are you sure your house isn't actually a spaceship with all those uh, controls and uh, remote controls and everything? Um, and uh, yeah, before I uh, give reports for everyone who I didn't give reports in the last over, uh, just a brief mention, probably for the last time, of the Morse code survey. Uh, there's one more week, it's open for one more week. If you want to get free membership of Cray Valley Radio Society, and you are already a member, you want to get next year's membership for free, it's your chance uh, if you haven't already uh, submitted the survey. It doesn't matter if you're interested in, in Morse code or not, this is what we need to know. We need to know how many people really are interested um, uh, without people's responses. If they stay silent, we just don't know. Um, so if you haven't already submitted your response to the survey, uh, please just go to QUA this month or last month. Both got links to the, to the survey. That will be much uh, appreciated. Uh, right, over to the remaining reports then. So uh, Dave M7IPY, uh, your Quan Shang in Falconwood is S9. Uh, not too surprising, Falconwood is my nearest uh, train station, so um, you're just uh, within uh, probably a few hundred meters of me. Um, Tony, uh, Mike 7, Foxtrot, Sierra Charlie, S8, uh, both readability 5, and uh, Laurie, I was getting you, G4 FAA, uh, S6, um, readability 5 when you were there, and, but uh, as others have said, you, you're coming <coughs> in and out. Um, Alex and Jakob, obviously both using the same uh, transceiver, M M7 IOI and M0KUK, both S9, uh, readability 5 to me. And, and Dave, G4NOW Mobile, uh, you were 5 and 4 um, from Bexley to, to Eltham, um, yeah, 5 and 4 to me, perfectly readable. Um, 
I, I just saw on WhatsApp that Jakob had sent a message uh, saying that uh, he and Alex were having to go QRT. So um, I guess, uh, well, Dave, I suppose you, you'll still call them, but I, I, I guess they won't be uh, won't be coming back. Um, it's getting closer to 11 o'clock now. There's still quite a few of us to get through, so I'm not sure if I'm going to get another over. Um, but I will just briefly mention um, the club projects. M most of those have been collected now. The roosters and the um, uh, the Kias, the, the Kia and practice oscillators. I've got a handful of uh, Kias uh, that still need to be collected. Um, those will be made available at the next club meeting, the AGM, uh, <coughs> which is going to be a week next Thursday. Um, I forget the date now. Um, but unfortunately, I won't be able to attend the AGM myself, but I'll make sure that the, the, the remaining club projects uh, to be collected will, will be there. And um, anybody who isn't going to be there, please contact me and I'll, I'll make separate arrangements. Maybe I can drop round or, or, or pop it in the post or, or something like that. Um, all right, I don't think I've got anything else, so I will pass it round to uh, Dave. Uh, Mike Seven, India Papa Yankee from Mike Zero, Whiskey Delta Victor. His time out timer went. Yes, it is, Dave. And you got as far as telling me that you just bought um, a five-eighth wave vertical and that's when it timed out.
don't want to hawk the channel because I know probably Tony's itching to have a go. So I'm going to pass it over if that's okay to uh, M7 uh, Foxtrot Sierra Charlie. This is uh, M7 India Papa Yankees. Bye bye. Break station, here you go. Mike 1, Tango Alpha Delta, sorry to be late on parade. Now, bottom of the list, Trevor, come on, dear, oh dear. Anyway, you served your, oh, lovely signal. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll just quickly pass it back to... <laughs> Everyone, time it out. NRH, this is Mike One Tango Alpha Delta in the group returning. Yeah, sorry I was late, guys. As I said, uh, I've only got one coax working at the moment, and obviously I have to get on the roof and change it over from the four from the four meter uh, uh, collinear. So, uh, as I said, uh, sorry for being uh, late on parade. Um, I, I haven't got everyone, Dave. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, Dev is wall to wall. Uh, obviously, uh, JCF wall to wall. Justin, wall to wall. Um, uh, uh, Laurie is uh, five and four with me, perfectly readable. Uh, obviously, um, uh, M7 uh, IOs, IRI, and also Jakob. Um, obviously, uh, I couldn't couldn't read at all. Really, they're down in the down in the noise. Um, uh, Tony um, uh, SCS, uh, he's uh, five and, and six with me. Uh, Dave. Um, ITY, he's five and six. Um, uh, I don't think, oh, and Dave NOW, he's right at the back of the box uh, down there in Lower Bexley. Uh, so uh, obviously uh, I couldn't hear him. Uh, but as I said, I've not I've not heard all the all the uh, net there, Dave. So I will just sit on the periphery here because I say it's getting near that that time uh, and let you uh, pass it round. But uh, thanks for letting me uh, letting me come in. Uh, G6NRH, this is Mike One Tango Alpha Delta in the group.
actually yeah, it goes to g4 faa and then g4 now um you, you missed them two out because um you shoved uh trevor in after tony so over to you um uh laurie uh g4 faa from m0 jcf in the cray valley group Yeah, G4 FIA, M0 JCF. Um, a little bit down on when you first called in. You're about 5 and 9 plus 10. I can see the Slim Jim flapping in the wind. You're going between 9 and 10, maybe 20. And uh, you cut out once then as well. So I'm just wondering if uh, you was using, you say a Slim Jim, if you was using um, ladder line uh, Slim Jim or if it was like copper pipe. But that's your report, Laurie. Roger, Roger. I know it's a ladder line one. be sensible to put a two meter dipole up there in, in place of the slim gym, especially with 12 people on the Sunday morning net. Okay, a couple of quickies then. The uh, eclipse is Monday the 8th of um, April, not, not tonight, Sunday. <coughs> uh, and uh, I plan to monitor between uh, 1900 uh, and uh, 2030 hours uh, BST. Um, mostly on on top band, uh, on 160 metres, to see if the collapsing D layer, uh, as it should collapse uh, when the sun gets turned off, um, uh, um, uh, brings up the signals. Uh, on VHF, well, I don't suppose it'll make any difference on two metres, but I'll be monitoring anyway, but not on this rig, on the, on the code in here upstairs. Um, the 2000B, the... Uh, the receiver mark uh, that I've checked out uh, works well, but I haven't got around to checking out the transmitter yet. Um, Morse code survey, yes, well, uh, apologies to have, I'll, uh, I'll attend to that too sweet. And signal reports for everyone after me, M7101 and uh, Jakob and... Uh, mm -hmm. And NOW mobile, no, no, no copy at all. Right, so now uh, I think it does actually go to N7 IOI. Did it? Da da da, did it? <laughs> uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, can, perhaps you can take it up, Dave. Uh, M7 India, Oscar India, Golf 4, Fox, Alpha Alpha, over. They went QRT, Laurie. It goes round to Dave N.O.W. Roger, Roger. I mean, the KW shelf uh, is uh, still, uh, well, 
there's probably a couple of Japanese soldiers in the uh, in what I've got to crawl through to get the native, but uh, other than that, uh, it's, it's not much more uh, to add, Dave. Apologies, as I said, for being late, but I've had 101 things to try and do and, and get this shack up and running, and obviously I've, I've got three of Dave's, four of Dave's projects on the bench waiting to start, so uh, hopefully in the next couple of days I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get them under me belt. Anyway, it's nice here in the M7, uh, as I said, Persevere, those little uh, bow fangs and things like that, uh, that's a start, then, uh, as I said, and you get used to using the mic and uh, get a lot more confidence and then uh, we'll see how we go from there, but uh, no, great, great listening to you all there. Anyway, Dave, I'll pass it back to you, as I said, I know the witching hour is 11 and you're getting, getting close to it and uh, if anyone else has got anything to add, I'm sure they, they're, they're doing that with you. So, uh, uh, G6 NRH, this is Mike 1 Tango Alpha Delta in the group. Mike 1 Tango Alpha Delta, Gulf 6 November Romeo Hotel. Yeah, all copied there, Trevor. Yeah, and I'll just see, before I close the net down, anybody got any comments or last things they want to say before I close the net down? It's Gulf 6 November Romeo Hotel. Yeah, just a quick one from M0JCF. Yeah, Justin, yeah, I keep missing you. So on Thursday, I couldn't stay for the uh, talk. So I went to the club, took the transistors, thinking you may turn up after I'd left. I left uh, those germanium transistors with Dav. So um, by hook or by crook, you will get them. But uh, they're with Dav at the moment. Uh, back to you, uh, Justin, G8YTZ, M0JCF. G, sorry, M7, IPY, Dave DeBase, are you still on, M0, JCF? M0, JCF, yeah, I'm still here. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Yes, mate. I was going to say, did you want to ask me about the um, the uh, antenna? You got as far as telling me that you'd bought the same one. My one was a high gain Venom, but uh, all the companies make them high gain Serio, etc. And the Venom is the one with the useless little um, uh, radials at the bottom. So, um, yeah, did you want to ask me now? M7 IP YM0 JCF. Yeah, no problem, mate. Um, okay, for ground wave, obviously you want the height. So um, the higher, the better if you want to talk to me over the ground wave. But uh, don't get hung up on trying to get it way above the roof if you want to work DX with it, because it all comes down to them. Really, the radiation angle, I mean, you do need it. I think, is it a quarter wave above the ground? So, um, you know, for the 10 meter band, you want it two and a half meters above the ground 
um, which is, you know, what's that, about seven or eight feet. So, you know, if you've got it at uh, my one, the base of the antenna is above the eaves of the house, but not above the apex of the house. And I say, and I've worked uh, right the way round to Australia with it with no problem. Um, it, it comes down to the angle where the main lobe comes off. And uh, with a 5 8 wave, it's quite low. So, so long as, you know, you haven't got a great big steel structure or something sort of, uh, you know, 500 yards down the road, then, uh, yeah, that, that main lobe, so long as it can sort of see the horizon. Um, and that, that's the way I understand it anyway. I am a very, very lazy antenna person. Um, I think everyone knows that. Um, I'm more interested in um, a hardware and uh, talking, homebrewing, that sort of thing, than antennas. That's why I've got a 90-foot long wire and um, uh, and an ATU for, for everything below 15 metres because I am so lazy, it's unbelievable. But, yeah, just um, yeah, just give us a shout, and if it comes to it, just send me a message on the WhatsApp. Now, don't send it to me on the uh, Cray Valley WhatsApp group because I've turned the notifications off for that, because obviously sometimes it can get quite active and it's constantly binging in my pocket. Uh, so just send me a direct message and I should then get, you know, the, the WhatsApp noise to let me know. And uh, j just let us know. And if I'm about, then of course I'll do that radio check. From where you are, it shouldn't be a problem. As I say, you know, it will be totally different when uh, you're working uh, via the ionosphere, whether it's um, a sporadic E or f layer you know it will be a totally different beast so you know i can give you a report from a ground wave point of view from over a couple of miles so that was a bit of a long over for you there to digest dave um uh, m7 ipy gotta get that right ippy um m0 jcf Yeah, okay, mate, no problem. And uh, I wouldn't get overly uh, worried about remembering the call sign every over. If you remember from the first principles of um, a foundation, uh, when you come across uh, how often should you use call signs, it's um, as often as practicable. A word I've never used before I started uh, as a licensed ham. It was the first time I ever come across that actual word. You go and do what you got to do and um, let's drive safely and uh, yeah watch out for the flying bits of wood and everything yeah what a spring we've had so far all right mate all the very best um uh, uh where are we m7 ipy m0 jcf going clear this frequency is now clear for use the frequency is clear for use m0 Yeah, G4 NOW, M0 JCF. Yeah, no problem, Dave. Yeah, as I say, when you was down there, uh, portable, you was actually a very good signal. And then, as I say, on that last over that you had, yeah, you totally uh, faded out. But that could have been because of the you was in a different position. But uh, yeah, you're you're back up there with uh, the rest of us. Hello. 
hello and goodbye. I know you're moving off. Thanks, Mark, for the signal. I was behind the huge Elton sense when I was transmitting. Must be made of steel. Take care, both of you, and uh, have, a, have a good one. Great course, I Cheers, M7 Hippie from G4 now. Okay, there was another station right down on the floor. I'm not sure if that was Tony, but uh, your signal's up and down with the wind. So um, I'm going to leave this frequency clear now. Uh, I do believe it should be clear for use. So anyone who calls in, I won't be there to answer. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> 